Original request. Uh, Mr. President, reserving the right to object. The Senator from Utah. For 61 days, several of my colleagues and I have objected to the majority's request for unanimous consent to circumvent regular order, to go to conference with the House on the budget. They want permission to skip a few steps in the process and jump straight to the closed door backroom meetings. There, senior negotiators from the House and the Senate will be free to wait until a convenient artificial deadline and ram through their compromise, unamended, undebated, and mostly unread. And with the country backed up against another economic cliff crisis, we're concerned they will exploit that opportunity to sneak a debt limit increase into the budget. We think that's inappropriate. And yet, objecting to this dysfunctional, unrepublican, undemocratic process has invited anger and criticism from colleagues here on both sides of the aisle. We just don't get it, you see. We just don't get it, we're told. Proceeding to a secret closed door back room, 11th hour deal, we're told, is the way the process works. It's the way the Senate works. It's the way the House works. It's the way Washington works. We know this. That's why we're objecting. In case nobody has noticed, the way Washington works stinks. Closed door back room cliff deals are not the solution, they're the problem. The unspoken premise of every argument we've heard in favor of going to conference on this budget without conditions is that Congress knows what it's doing. Trust us to go back into a back room and cut a deal. Trust us to ignore special interests and only work for the good of the country. Trust us to not wait until the 11th hour, to not hold the full faith and credit of the United States hostage, to not ram through another thousand page trillion dollar bill sight unseen. Trust us, we're Congress. As it happens, Mr. President, the American people don't trust Congress or either party. And we've given them at least 17 trillion reasons not to do so. I can provide physical evidence to support my claim. If, if the American people had confidence in the way the Senate works, I know for a fact I wouldn't be here. I don't think my colleagues joining me in this objection would be here either. We were not sent here to affirm the way the Senate worked as Congress racked up trillions in debt, inflated the housing bubble, doled out favors to special interests, squeezed the middle class, and trapped the poor in poverty. We were sent here to change that. We're fully aware that Washington and the establishments within both parties don't like what we're saying. But as computer programmers are sometimes inclined to say, that's a feature, not a bug. The tactics of Washington serve the interests of Washington, of Congress itself, the federal bureaucracy, corporate cronies, and special interests. And it does so at the expense of the American people, their wallets, and their freedom. The only time I can think of when it hasn't worked out that way was with the recent budget sequestration. And that was literally an accident, a mistake. The sequestration process worked out exactly the opposite of how Washington expected and intended. There is a reason, Mr. President, that six of the 10 wealthiest counties in the United States are suburbs of Washington, D.C., a city that produces almost nothing in real, tangible economic value. And it's not because the two parties have been so effective taking on the special interests and doing the people's business. There's a reason the Tea Partiers on the right and the occupiers on the left protest their shared perception that our economy, our politics, and our society seem rigged. That elites on Wall Street, K Street, and Pennsylvania Avenue get to play by one set of rules and the people on Main Street must play by another. It's because they're mostly right. This is our true inequality crisis, not between rich and poor, but between Washington and everyone else in America. The national debt and its statutory limit is a hidden part of this inequality crisis. After all, what is new debt but a tax increase of sorts on future Americans, on those who in some cases cannot yet vote, on those who in some cases have yet to be born? Raising the debt limit thus results and a really pernicious form of taxation without representation. That's why the American people resent it. And it's why Washington desperately wants to raise the debt limit with as little public scrutiny and as little accountability as possible. And that's why we're objecting. Now our critics say that we should allow the process to move forward so we can have a debate. I don't know if they've noticed, Mr. President, but we're having the debate. We've had it for several days in a row. 
And more than that, we're having the debate here on the floor, open to public scrutiny, and not secretly behind closed doors. This right here is how the process is supposed to work. The only way the American people can have any hope in supervising their Congress, not ours, their Congress, is for us to do our work above board and in the open according to the rules. That's all we're asking for, and only on this one issue. For all our concerns, we still, uh, we, we have still said all along that we will not block a budget conference. We can go to conference right now on the budget, right this very moment. We're willing to give the majority permission to break from regular order and scurry off to closed door negotiations to cut their backroom deal. All we've asked is this one thing, a very small and simple request, leave the debt limit out of it. Do everything else you want. Spend all the money you want. Use all the accounting gimmicks you want. But when you go into that back room, check the debt limit at the door. That way, the American people can have that separate debate on its merits here on the floor. This should not be controversial. The House Republican budget did not include a debt limit increase or instructions to include one. The Senate Democratic budget doesn't include it either. House and Senate negotiators, therefore, have no procedural or democratic justification for including a debt limit hike in their tasks. They have no right to do it, yet they won't promise not to. Once again, Mr. President, it's a message of trust us, we're Congress. This is how the Senate works, they say. This is how we do things. This is how we've always done things. Respectfully, Mr. President, this is how we fail. This is how we earn our 15% approval rating. We know this is business as usual around here. That's why we're objecting. If the majority wants to proceed to a budget conference through regular order, we cannot stop them. But again, Mr. President, that's not their request. Their request is for permission to break from regular order, skip a few steps, and go straight into secret negotiations behind closed doors, where in the Washington Center view of the world, the real governing can be done. The American people do not trust secret backroom deals, and neither do I. Unless and until the American people are assured that we will not sneak a debt limit increase into the conference report, I will happily continue to object, and I object to the motion on the floor. Your objection is heard. Mr. Mr. President. President.